so now we start this uh, new topic accounting for overheads as we discussed in our, in our chapter number two that overheads are indirect costs are the same thing and when we say overheads or we say indirect it means that these are the costs which are not fairly measurable within the unit of output which means that you see any unit of output let's suppose we take an example of a table so there are many materials and labor components which you can see which you can measure which are visible but there are some costs which are not visible within that unit of output uh, we gave that example before that for example the electricity which was used uh, while making that table you cannot measure it how much of electricity is within the table for example this table was made with some equipment and that equipment had some depreciation so how much of the depreciation uh, is included in that cost of that table that's not fairly measurable when you see the table so because these costs they are inside the unit of output but you cannot fairly or easily measure them so you call them overheads you call them indirect costs in this chapter we are going to discuss so there are uh, production and non-production overheads so there are production overheads and non-production overheads but what we are going to focus we are going to focus fixed production overhead so you may have variable production overheads fixed production overheads then you have variable non-production and then you have variable uh, fixed non-production out of these four types we would be focusing more on fixed production overheads so that's our topic for today so topic list is absorption costing it's one method of calculating the cost of a unit of product we will see this cost in detail overhead allocation overhead allocation means that how do you spread or how do you add the overheads into your unit of products overhead apportionment overhead absorption then we'll talk about blanket absorption rates and over and under absorption of overheads and ledger entries relating to overheads so overhead is the cost incurred in the course of making a product providing a service or running a department but which cannot be traced directly and in full to the product service or department so as i mentioned earlier that it is a cost which you have incurred but you cannot fairly measure it you cannot easily measure it within the unit of cost or within the unit of output overhead is actually the total of the following indirect material indirect labor and indirect expenses and if you remember our chapter number four we were discussing indirect material could be glue which i gave you that example before if you have watched that video indirect labor could be the salary of uh, you know uh, indirect material i said glue indirect labor could be your supervisor salary other indirect expenses could be utilities or anything else <clears throat> Overhead could be split into the following categories production overheads administrative overheads selling and distribution so this first one is production and the next two are non-production overheads because there are expenses within the production department and within other non-production departments which you are incurring but which are not directly related to the unit of product which you cannot fairly measure in the unit of product absorption costing is a method for sharing overheads between different products on a fair basis now what happens what do we mean by that let me first uh, give an example let's suppose you uh, pay depreciation you have a, a you have an expense which is called depreciation of your factory equipment which is hundred thousand dollar per year now this hundred thousand it is a fixed cost it is for one year and uh, you cannot identify it within each unit of product but you must add it you must find out a method you must find out a way that how to uh, divide this <clears throat> how to allocate or how to absorb this hundred thousand dollar into your unit of product for example you make doors you make windows you make tables you make chairs so you are making five thousand tables five thousand chairs five thousand doors five thousand windows i don't know whatever so this all of this production which you make this output let's suppose 20,000 pieces of furniture and then you have spent 100,000 on depreciation of that so this 100,000 must be spread over these 20,000 units of output similarly you pay fixed rent you pay rent of your factory so your rent of the factory is let's suppose I don't know let's call it fifty thousand dollars so this fifty thousand dollars you do not pay it for one unit you pay it for the entire per output you pay it for the entire production which you do in one year so this fifty thousand dollar there should be some method that you charge it or allocate it to the entire production 
So that method through which you will charge or allocate these costs, this overhead cost would be called absorption costing. So absorption costing is a method through which you will absorb the cost of overheads into the unit of product. The, the objective of absorption costing, the objective of absorption costing is to include in the total cost of a product an appropriate share of organization's total overhead. So whatever are your total overheads, some share of that, some little part of that, you have to add it into each unit of output. And that method would be called absorption costing method. So cost card, this is, um, you can call it a piece of paper or card. And traditionally it was a card, now you do it on computer, where you write down the cost of uh, manufacturing one unit. Let's suppose if a customer comes in and places an order to make one table for him, and if I have taken the order for making a table, so I will open up one cost card. I will write down the customer name, the job name, the date, the date of delivery, the, the uh, uh, customer contact details, etc. And that cost card, I will give it to the manufacturing or to the production department that go and make one table for this customer. And when production department will start their production, will start manufacturing of that table, they will use different materials and different labor and they will write down all the material and labor cost and overheads onto that cost card. So that cost card will ultimately will include all the cost items which we used in making that table so that end of the day we will be able to find out how much cost we have incurred on that particular table or on that particular product. So it looks like this for example you've got the your aim of making a cost card is to find the full cost of one unit and the cost of one unit it includes the direct material so let's suppose you are using four kilograms of material at two dollars per kilogram so it should be eight dollars material then you have direct labor three hours at the rate of seven dollar per hour so twenty one dollars of labor and this thing is called prime cost so prime cost means all of your direct costs so direct material direct labor and maybe direct expenses so whichever are your direct cost you make a total and you call it prime cost now that is not the full cost it only includes the direct material and direct labor then we also have and this process which you are doing it is called allocation actually the word allocate means any cost which you can see which you can directly attribute you call it allocate because within the table i know i'm using uh, within that unit of output i know i'm using four kilogram of material there is no ambiguity i can measure it i can measure it very easily eight dollars so i call it allocate I'm using three hours of labor, which means $21 of labor. There is no doubt in that. I can see it. I can measure it. So I call it allocate. Allocate are those costs which you can see, which you can measure and you directly assign to the product. Then I also need to add my overheads because material, labor and overheads. My next component is overheads. Overheads, we do it in three steps. So there are three steps for that. What are those three steps we will discuss. So when you add prime cost plus overheads, what you get that is called full product cost. Absorption costing stages. So we said that it is it consists of three steps. So there are three steps of charging overhead. So let's see in the next slides these three steps. This is very important. You must pay attention. Absorption costing stages. First is called allocation. Allocation is the process by which whole cost items are charged direct to a cost unit or a cost center. Cost unit or a cost center. Let's suppose that you pay rent for the factory, say $10,000. And then that $10,000 you pay rent, but you have different departments. You have a cutting department, you have a stitching department, you have washing department, you have packing department. You've got four departments. So this 10,000 rent, we should allocate it, we should charge it to four different departments. How can you do it? There could be different methods. For example, if it is a rent, so I will see that which department is using how many square meters. So my total premises is 1000 square meters and 1000 square meters, I'm paying 10,000 rent. So it means that one square meter is $10. So whichever department is using how many meters, you will multiply it with $10 and you will divide this 10,000 between the four departments. Let's suppose that four departments, they, uh, you know, utilize equal space. They are occupying the equal space. 
if they are utilizing equal space so then this 10000 you will divide equally between the four departments like $2,500 each for four departments. That process is called allocate where you divide your cost between different cost centers. Then apportionment. Apportionment, it is a process by which indirect costs are spread fairly between cost centers. So here I'm going to allocate my indirect cost between different cost centers. I'm going to show you this process in the next slide. So apportionment is a process by which indirect costs are spread fairly between cost centers. Absorption. Overhead absorption is a process whereby cost allocated and apportioned to the production cost centers are added to the unit, unit job or batch cost. So whatever apportionment we will do after doing apportionment, then we make absorption. Absorption means adding the cost into the unit of product. So absorption is the final stage in which you charge cost to the one unit of output. So apportionment, I'm giving it to the cost center and then from cost center, I charge it to the one unit of output. Overhead allocation, charging the whole cost to a cost unit or cost center. So absorption costing method, how does it work? You've got total production cost. Your total production cost, it consists of direct cost and indirect cost. And please remember, we are talking about production cost only here. So you have direct cost and indirect cost. Direct cost, you can fairly charge the cost unit. You call it allocate. Allocate means you charge it to the cost unit. It's very simple. Direct cost, we said that they are fairly measurable. We know how much of how many kilograms or how many hours of labor we straight charge here. Indirect cost, these are not directly chargeable because you know, direct cost you pay for one unit. So when I when a customer says that please make one table for me, so for that particular table I buy wood for fifty dollars. So I know that this fifty dollars I spent only for this table. So this fifty dollars will go straight to the cost of this table because I spent money only for this table. But when I pay my rent for one month, say five thousand dollars, that rent is not for that table. And I and by after paying five thousand dollar rent throughout one month, I will make many tables, shares and windows. So that is indirect cost and I cannot charge it straight to the cost unit. What I do with my indirect cost, let's suppose my rent or depreciation. I allocate and apportion. Allocate and apportion means that I see that this money which I am giving the rent, how many cost centers I have. I've got production one, which maybe is you can call it cutting or then production two, which is called stitching. And then there is a service department also. Service department means a department which is in your factory, but it is not doing any direct production. For example, you have got a cafeteria. So that cafeteria is a service department, or maybe you have an IT department in your factory. IT department is not making anything. IT department is only providing service to the other production department but it is also occupying some space from the factory. So whatever rent I will give, that rent I will allocate and apportion. I will allocate means which departments it should go. I say production one, production two and service. This is called allocation. Then apportion. Apportion means how much of rent should go to production one, production two and service. So let's suppose our rent is $1,000 we see how much space is used. So production department one, it occupies 60% of the space. Production two occupies 30% of the space and service department is taking only 10% of the sales. So then 1000 multiplied by 60%, 600 rent I will give to production one, 1000 multiplied by 30%, 300 I will give to production two and 100 here. So 600, 300 and 100. That's how my $1,000 rent will be divided between three different departments. But now the problem is that any department which does not give any output, which, is, which does not produce any saleable item, you cannot give them cost because they cannot recover their cost. You know, the service department is not producing any goods. Service department is only providing service to these two departments. So they are my source of revenue. They give me output. The service department is not needed. It only works for these two departments. If I don't have production one and production two, then I also do not need service department. Why do you need service department? You need service department because it provides service to production one and production two. 
if there is no production one no production two you don't need it so whatever cost you give to service department that cost actually is the cost of production one and production two because service department it gives service to these two departments so what i do that this hundred dollars which i give to service department i charge it back to production one and production two that's how so this department cost will become zero because all of the cost i have already given to these two departments and then i will make absorption now from here production one i give cost to cost unit production one and production two this process is called absorption now i will see that production one department cost i have and production two i have overheads and i will see what is the cost and how many units it produced so for example production one department cost is uh, 2000 uh, how to say 2000 dollars and it produced only 1000 units so two dollars per unit i will give here the cost is three thousand dollar and one thousand units so three dollars i take from production two so production one will give here two dollars production two will give here three dollars this process is called absorption so first stage you make allocate and apportion which means you give cost to the three departments then the service department cost you transfer back to the production department and then you give it to the cost unit